And we're back. Or have we been here the whole time? Back to back well, where we started. Mr. Gun feels a bit uh, formal. Back to the future. Gun tur, gonna slav. Or are we in Maybe the past? The machine. Eh. Sex is for target practice. Uh -huh. What are these dummies for? There's only friends. They're the or, or they're the real enemies. That'll be the twist at the end. That our friends become our enemies. Or our, our mannequin enemies friends. Why does it feel like I'm? Or our enemies are our friends. I don't know. No yeah. Sense. That this this woman you're trying to, or who's trying to kill you, is really your best friend in the whole world. They just have a huge stroke. He did say that they dated, so. He did say that it's true. But I mean, though, is that she's really helping you this whole time, Probably. and she's just your best friend, you. wanting well, to talk to you. And hang That'll out be the you. twist. And she's she's wins. your she's your best friend, not a past romantic partner. And you've just assumed too much. You've just assumed that that's been the case. So you're gathering residuum that is giving you something. It allows you to do powers and stuff. What's I thought, right? Again? I forgot. Water. Uh, looks like that's the poop shoot. So also, I have a question with the whole friend, best friend, romantic partner thing. Is this just the friend zone? Is that what it is? This infinite loop? Oh, she and more. you can't she, break she out does, of the friend zone? You can't break out of the friend zone. Oh. <laughs> that's, actually, that's exactly what it is, kids. That's actually really tragic that he's forever stuck in a loop of friend zone. Occasionally, she shows up and murders you. <laughs> Thank you. Nah. Culture. Was that always an option? I don't that remember it. <laughs> uh, too self -involved. But again, yeah. why make it an autofill option? Culture. Why not just open the door? Am I naming this gun after me? Okay, cool. He's got a head start, so drop whatever and kill him. What? I wanted to get the thing. No. Too bad. Don't put it on a door. Maybe that's is that is that an achievement? Get the card before you open the door. You survived. You slipped away into the tunnels. Infusion complete. Wait. Was that I don't a level? I guess. And the audience doesn't even know anything happened. He clicked and it was right here. There definitely wasn't any taint related problems. More specifically, bombastic taint. Bombastic taints. Was it a bombastic taint or a bombastic problem? Related to taint. Related to a taint. I'm absolutely shocked by the shock absorber that you would ever assume that anything would be different. Is, was that was it a shock absorber? Taint related, <laughs> and I'm just forcing taint the taint jokes. A, the a, taint. Taint, a taint related episode. Yes. I'm gonna infuse my limp ten. <laughs> Listen, see, because we're on taint related things, you said limp ten, and I thought you were gonna say limp taint. Like I'm gonna infuse <laughs> my limp taint. Family friendly adjacent is uh, our content as well. Uh, we are we are a mature channel. Much much like Jack Black, right? Sometimes he's for the kids, sometimes he's for the adults. No, isn't that more specifically like Robin Williams? Like as well, yeah. Robin Williams is one of those. Like he very much had his adult stand up, but then mm -hmm. of course you know him as like Mrs. Doubtfire or the Genie yeah. or things like that. The well, the most shocking one is usually end up, ends up was most um, comedians who ended up with sitcoms. That was the case. But the one that was most shocking for me was Bob Saget. Because right. you know him from Full House and from America's Funniest Home Videos. And it was like, he's America's dad, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like his stand up is like the most vile. Yeah. Foul. I, I remember that when 
I guess it was probably like around the time that Full House ended that I had friends who had heard about his stand-up bits and they were just so shocked. Are we like, talking about his bits? His bits. His saggot bits. They're standing up. <laughs> Sag- bits. I mean, that was that was that was most of his stand-up comedy was talking about bits. <laughs> yeah. But they, they were just shocked because, as you just said, he was like America's dad. You imagine yep. him as he was he was the Tanner father and things like that. And then the next thing you know, his stand up comedic um, whatever his stand up. I can't think of what they're actually stand up com- comedy. Yeah. Routine? routine. That's what I was trying to think of. Where, yeah, they were not family friendly. Because that was something like with Robin Williams. I remember clearly knowing him from like Mrs. Doubtfire and the genie and his more family friendly entertainment. And then the next thing I know, my mom had one of his adult stand-up, like, live things on the DVD, and she said, you're not allowed to watch this. And I was shocked, because I thought, but it's Robin Williams. Like, what are you talking about? He's he's a great stand-up guy. And she's like, no. This is this is an adult stand-up. So, no. Well, what's funny with, with, with that with my parents, I can't remember what movie it was specifically. My mom was like, you can never see this movie. And then I eventually, of course, I did. Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking at the time, like, that movie was no worse than movies she had taken me to. Oh, like, yeah. Well, that's what's. But and, like my mom, like accidentally, like my brother, my older brother talked her into this and she didn't research the movie, mm-hmm. and especially at the time. The 90s it was, you know, it's not like you're just pulling up Google to be like, oh, hey, here's all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, but he convinced her to go see From Dusk Till Dawn. <laughs> so my mom took my older brother to see From Dusk Till Dawn. When he was like 13, 14, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and but the funny thing is, that wasn't the movie she told me I could never see. There was, I can't remember what, there was something else. I was just like, I, yeah, it's just parents are funny sometimes. Well, sort of it, exactly. Cause not like it matters. Cause, you know, who cares about the Matrix beyond the first Matrix? But I remember seeing, you know, the Matrix. And the Revolutions and Reloaded. We'll say Reloaded because I think Reloaded's second and Revolutions third. I remember seeing those in theaters. Yeah. R-rated movies, things like that. Who cares? But then I was basically told not to watch the movie 300. And I was, I was just thinking, like, but you've allowed R-rated movies before. Why is this a problem? I, so I know exactly why. It's because of transsexual Asian number three. No, for her, it wasn't that. It was Thought apparently the full-blown uh, sex scene with like kind of uh, Leonidas and his wife. Friendship is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Where the, my mom was like, no. Because no, I, I remember seeing that at theaters again with my older brother. And I don't. And we really liked the movie and we're watching the credits because it's something we always do. Yeah. And we saw that, that that was because it was funny because it was like transsexual Asian number three, transsexual Asian number <laughs> five, transsexual Asian number seven. And we're like, where are the even numbers? <laughs> you don't get even numbers. Or There's no such Juliana's thing. Juliana's <laughs> on the hunt. Can I just go back? Well, so you. Yeah, or just kill her. Like, she was really easy last time. Yeah. Do you think she's going to get more difficult? Killed. Hack the antenna and unlock the tunnels. She killed you the first time. She's gone on the hunt before and you've killed her. So. Yeah. Um, but with the idea of 300, I ended up seeing the movie The Watchmen in theaters yeah. with my mom. Yeah. And that is so much more, that's so much worse than 300. And so, I mean, it was an awkward experience because my mom, she looked over at me and she's like, I should have brought in like a blindfold for you. I was like, too late. I'm seeing things. I'm seeing what's here. So what, what's funny is my uh, st- younger stepbrother is much younger than me. Busted. We'd be watching TV, cable, you know, something else was something was on always. Oh, yes, kicking. <laughs> oh, you almost kicked her off the edge, but not quite. 
Anyways, anytime something came up where there was something like that in there, I would always just yell out boobies <laughs> just to make him embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Yeah. Well, and good times. So clearly my mom was a lot less strict when it came to R-rated movies. She still had her moments of like, no, no, you're not allowed to watch that. My dad, on the other hand, was very much, no, no, the wrath of God will be upon you if you even consider watching R-rated movies. So I can't remember who owned the movie, but we were at my dad's and it was decided that we wanted to watch American Pie. Better not yeah, yeah. and there were there were moments that I'm like I can't like if my dad sees us watching this or even just happens to glance at the TV we're dead he's gonna he's not gonna be at all pleased that we're watching something like this Whoa, yeah, he what was, the she ah. came from behind oh, she got she you. came from behind you see more more references. She came from behind and stabbed Jane. With a bombastic taint problem. It just rewinds you back to yeah. there. And wait, was it your best friend or your friend zone? See, Sounds see, like it. That position you're in, that kind of, I mean, that kind of looks like that's what happened. Sounds like someone's running up above you, so... Kerfuffle? kerfuffle. <laughs> you just shot a kerfuffle off of a building. Show you a kerfuffle. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> what is shooting at me? I don't know. I'm because I'm at like four frames a second right yeah. now, so everything and yeah, nothing. Yeah, I was gonna say it's hard for for me to tell, and I thought it might have just been my internet, but. Yeah, there were, no. there were just certain movies within my family that it was just like, no, you can't watch that. Especially like around my dad, because like I said, he was very much like the wrath of God will be upon you if you watch R-rated or even some PG-13 movies. To where I, I had to be a lot older before I could have access to them and watch whatever I wanted. I worked in a movie theater when I was in high school and just after. Um, I can't remember the name of this movie. It's got Rebecca Romaine in it and it's, it's, you know, very inappropriate for everybody. She's like a thief stealing stuff or whatever. But it was a big deal and every, like everybody was making... Like, I think it was like when the theater was told specifically, like, you know, this is... This probably shouldn't even be allowed in theaters kind of a thing, but somehow the censors let it slip. The censors let it slip. So be on, be, be oh, aware shit. that, you know, if kids try to sneak yeah. in or whatever, so. How is that? That's oh, her. Is that her? No. And that she's the one that stabs you. Yes, she can take an unlimited and amount of multiple shots. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so everybody who works at the movie theater was like, you know, it was like the joke of it. who's going to go and peek and watch and he's going to do this and he's going to do that and da 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 da. Um, and I was an adult at the time, so I was just like, well, I don't, whatever, mm -hmm. this is dumb. Um, and, but there was one lady who was like really, really shaming people, really judging people, really making yeah. it a big deal. And one night I happened to walk into the theater just for a theater check and she was standing there watching it. <laughs> just like, oh, really? Uh, hypocrisy Did much? Did you call her out on it? I was like, yes, how's that high horse you just fell off of? <laughs> let me help you back up. <laughs> let me let me help you back up onto your high horse. It's so high, it's going to be hard to do it. Yeah, and it's one of those many things because, you know, she was judging everybody. And I'm like, look, I'm not judging. I don't care. Like, you do yeah. you. But I just think it's hilarious. Like, it's, you know, like, I, well, I don't think less. It's like, I don't think less of you because, you know, you're you're. You know, judging people and you know being hip hypocritical, I just I think it's like I'm just hilarious. Like there's yeah, it's uh, just yeah one of those things I, that makes me happy that I probably shouldn't be happy about. But right, well with uh with content because I've mentioned this before, you know, growing up in a very religious environment, it was like people had high horses. Like 
you can't mm-hmm. you can't do that like no it's against it's against religion like, god god's gonna punish you for things like that and it's all horrible and it's terrible and what are you doing but nowadays like who cares a lot of that that was a that was something that was like really big because you know when i was younger and my parents had my parents were getting a divorce and i had a lot of friends who were kind of giving me like the side eye and the your parents are getting a divorce like no that's like families wow. forever and uh <laughs> your parents got married in the temple and you know it's all this and like it's all that but now as i'm older i found a lot of those same people are on their third marriage or whatever and i just think oh are you still on your high horse about like your and, like, your ideals for, and things like for, that you know for kids there's a lot of it they're 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 mirroring parents or they're yeah. you know, following the the, the guidelines of the yeah, parroting the, yeah. the the society that they're in, but there's all there's also the uh, you don't really know what life is like. No, <laughs> you know, as a kid, you're like you know, so you'll make stupid comments and stupid judgments and stupid ideologies and stupid things like that. But then you get in the real world and you're like, oh, actually, yeah. That, I know that this might this might be one of those, I guess, controversial statements. But sometimes I feel that there should be a limit, like a time limit for when people dredge up the past. Like if you're pulling things back from when someone was a teenager, look, you change. You might say something that's really stupid when you're a teenager, but if you don't think that way now, that's a good thing. But if you still think the same now, then there might be a problem. Well, yeah, Bo Burnham talks about a lot of that in interviews and things like that, where his he's like my early stand up. He's like, I was 16 doing stuff on the Internet. And he's like, I'm terribly embarrassed by most of that content and would never make it now and shouldn't yeah. have made it then. But he's like, I was a stupid kid and I, you know, didn't know and, you know, had yeah. unrestricted access to the Internet. And, you know, that, that's kind of that the I, point where, you know, you you do stupid things and you make mistakes you say something that's wrong but that's why because we're in we're in the age of where you sit like for us for instance we can say something and it's forever out there in the world for someone to dredge up they can search through our videos and be able to say you said this on this day in this video doing this Yep. But I and think, I'll say I, be- I believe you <laughs> you, can, you can make it up and I'll say I believe I you, believe you. <laughs> I don't know what I said when I said it, but it probably happened. Yeah, but we we live in such a we live in such an age where it's all out there for someone to be able to dredge up. But if if someone said something that was inappropriate and they were twelve, and then you're trying to drag dredge it up and they're now like fifty, there it's been what 30, 40 years since they said that. They change. People change. And I think it's kind of a little unfair well, to try and say, you're this exact person you were when you were 12, and you think this exact same thing, and you're a horrible, terrible person. No, times were different. Things were thought differently. Things were said differently. I, was my I, I, I learned... <laughs> I learned to see information. I shouldn't have said that. Look, that was Nugget, you less intelligent. Perfect, perfect, perfect example of that. Where, you know, and I, I saw a pod or a clip from a podcast. It was two of the guys who used to be on Cracked back when Cracked was hilarious before everybody got fired because weird reasons. Anyway, yeah, but they were talking about that where they watched a movie and What's this guy doing. Is he just throwing or lady like poppets? I don't know what it is. Robot? I don't know. Anyway, but they were talking about like watching a movie and they're like, oh, it had like a really problematic at, like attitude towards women or something like that. Right. In it. And they were like, and then I was thinking like, yeah, but it was 2010. It was a different time. And they're like, right. like but that's Probably not, not right. Like we, we have a, de- a, a definitive line, right? 
it's like because the older I get, the more that that moves with me. Like it was 2016. Oh, it was 20. You know, like mm. at some point in time, it's like, no, this is problematic and always has been. And you know, we can give excuses after so long, but like we need to be like, no, the 80s. You know, like mm -hmm. it's it, that that shouldn't be a moving line. Yeah. Because I mean, I've thought about that. You, I mean, you brought up American Pie. Yeah. A, a movie like American Pie would not be made now. Do well, like it, well, it wouldn't be made now, but it also it wouldn't do well in theaters now. Yeah. What is up with your countdowns? Oh, it's just like also you want to aim down sights and it just covered your face. Yeah. But I mean, that's things like audiences change. Like, in was it ninety nine when that movie came out? Two thousand when it came Something out? Something like that. Targeted towards idiot teenagers. Speaking of idiot teenagers, right. that was hilarious. That was them, and that's why that movie was a success. Like, it's not like you know they they they, they tailored to their audience, and because like my parents didn't see that movie, no. but everybody in high school, everybody all you know, everybody saw that movie. Yeah, I remember. So. I remember when that movie came out. It was a big deal. It was referenced. Yeah. It was talked about. It was you know whatever and yeah. and and realistically like it was just the shock value teenage movie like that and those like that's a genre that exists mm -hmm. like it's it maybe maybe it still exists i don't know but i think maybe the internet has changed that but you know those don't hit the mainstream as much but Cause I remember hearing about the movie Porky's when I was in like junior high and how raunchy and that was and like thinking through that movie it's like yeah that that none of that stuff was cool and you know at the time people were like yeah this is totally normal and this is hilarious and, da, da, da. and I was like it's ridiculous raunchy humor but yeah but again it, I think the issue comes in with people people emulating that in real life it's like that's where it becomes a problem yeah know the difference between entertainment and reality like but again though like times are different movies like that <laughs> would have difficulties being made or even being popular now because we change as a society like you take you take instances like words where people find offense in certain words now that were relatively okay back in the 80s and 90s and so on and so forth or well before yeah. or that there were they were descriptive words to to describe a situation but be, they they take on a negative connotation and that's the important thing and like i said tell you that's what i teach my kids like i was like look i don't care what you say unless it hurts yeah. someone and I, i've had to draw a, a distinction with them as well where it's like there's profanity mm -hmm that I don't care about because most of those words have no meaning or they're a modifier to something else. And then there's slurs yes. and slurs only exist to bring someone down. They have no other purpose than to tear people down. And so I've had to teach kids, you know, and I've had just told like that concept. I haven't been like, these are words that are that these are words that are that like, but, and I've let them know like society, you know, if you use profanity a lot, society is going to view you a yeah. certain way. So, well, if you say it at school, teachers are going to get mad at you. Grandparents are going to get upset. Those yeah. kinds of things. So I was like, but I'm never going to like, I'm not going to get mad at you. I, I said, I'm going to get more upset with you if you're intentionally trying to tear someone down. So if you call somebody a butthead or you're stupid or you're, you know, you're, you're trying to tear them down, I'm going to get upset. You use profanity. I don't mind. Like, it's like, you know, whatever. So, yeah, I'm also, you know. One of them crazy millennials that's just ruining this country or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so for them, if we're, if millennials are ruining the country, what does that make? Like Gen Z and oh, they're okay. even worse. I I kind of have stopped caring about the millennials are ruining the country and baby boomers are the best I... and Gen Z is doing this and people are like, listen. People, it does not matter what generation you are in. If you are an asshole, you are an asshole. It doesn't matter. Just when it comes to things with like Gen X and millennials and Gen Zs, it's like, yeah, if you suck and you treat people like garbage, it does not matter what, well, what generation you like, come from. Years and years and years ago, 
I can't remember what this guy's name was, but he was talking about people working and millennials versus boomers and blah, 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 yeah. that kind of nonsense. And this guy was of like millennial age or around that. Whoa! And oh, oh, goodbye, Nugget. Oh, wait, no, you're still alive. There. Okay, I thought you were gone forever. Uh, but where I worked at the time, there were a lot of people who were like, yeah, that's right, these kids these days. And I had to explain to them, like, he's talking about your generation. Like, mm. They were all millennials. And they're like, no, I'm not. And I'm like, yes, yes, you are. This is the age that's considered a millennial. And they were like, but I'm not like that. And I'm like, you're right. Mm hmm. Oh, Weird. It's a guy behind you. Where? And then up on the. Okay, turn around. Right near that yellow thing. I don't know what that is, but he's, where? he's behind that yellow barricade. There? Yeah. But to the he right. He was on the right. He was on the right side, and then he moved to the left. So he's ducked behind it. Yeah. Or he's run away. Do you have a grenade? Or do you only have firecrackers? Up. Yeah, there it is. Click. That was an interesting way to try to get away from that grenade. <laughs> So the other one, I, I got to say this about the millennial versus boomer nonsense. Yeah. I have a friend whose dad was ripping on how lazy his gen, his the kids generation was and how right. none of them want to work and all of that, blah, 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 blah. And he's saying this to his son, my friend, mm. my son, who has a family at the time. He still has a family, but at the time he worked three jobs to make ends meet and his wife worked part time. Mm hmm. And mm -hmm. his dad sat there, and his dad knew all of this. Mm -hmm. Sat there and called him lazy and said that if he worked harder, blah, 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 blah. Just meanwhile, his dad, huh. well, and meanwhile, his dad worked a union job and got better pay because of the union, but then trashed the people trying to talk about unions. It's just like the hypocrisy, again, hypocrisy of it yeah. all. Like, you know, like, yeah, come off your high horse. But that was one of those where it's just like, yeah, started to lose respect for people I used to respect kind of a thing. So when I when I had started, growing up kids, yeah, <laughs> when I had started college, there was a discussion with one of my teachers because he he left where we are, the, the state that we're in, and he went to California because he was doing a lot of sound projects, working on movies, things like that. And the only way that he was able to adequately get work was to travel to California to do it, to work on those projects. And he found that the way that unions worked actually benef clearly benefit the worker. Like they create uh -huh. a more safer environment Rules, regulations, things to protect the worker. But something that he talked. Oh, oh nice. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he talked about. Because there was a project that he was working on in California. When that project ended, he decided to move back to where he was from. And he found that he liked kind of working more as like an independent contractor just because it had more freedom to do things without having to worry about stepping on other people's toes but that is something that i find more frustrating when i hear people arguing against unions it's it screws over the worker and i it's just frustrating when people are like no unions are bad and all this it's like no they provide you with regulation and a standard base of pay and yeah the the crazy one because it was it ups just avoided the teamsters and ups made a made a deal um but one of the conditions one of the conditions was air conditioning in the trucks oh, as yeah. well as like full-time employment for people and better wages and like f more full-time jobs and better pay for part-time people all that kind of good stuff but air conditioning in the trucks and what i i've discovered what i was or what I was, I guess, educated on yeah. and levels of truth here based on where this information comes from. But allegedly the trucks from for the UPS trucks from the factory have air conditioning, air conditioning installed on them. 
and UPS had that rem has that removed. The trucks are delivered, air conditioning's pulled out, and then they're given to the drivers. Mm. And it's it's a cost cutting saver. If, if, if you know, like it, probably less less fuel, or people work faster in hotter conditions. Something I don't know. Yeah. Like yeah, but still like. Yeah, I. Wow. It seems to be like, wouldn't that be more of a cost to remove them? Like, yeah. It's... But it's, it's ridiculous that you should you should have to go on strike or, or threaten to go on strike to get air conditioning in a vehicle behind the door. Yeah, that's your job. Yeah. So I. I... But that that's kind of the point, though. Is I again? You just said like you know, take it as you will. Who knows if it's true or not? But. If that's true, you're actively screwing over your employees by saying yep. you are less than and you don't deserve to have a comfortable work environment. Realistically, that's what it is, because, you know, it doesn't affect the people making the decisions because they're the ones sitting in an office in air conditioning. Yeah, they, so. they are sitting down and, you know twiddling their thumbs or pretending to make worthwhile decisions. That gun sucks. You need to get rid of it. It jams a lot. Well, and one thing I've always said when it comes to companies and jobs, especially if you get into smaller companies, like, there's ne necessarily one more person who's important than more important than the other ones. Like, Everybody's working together to make the thing run. Yes. So, unless it's like a massive corporation, which kids, that's a great, you know, go work for a company that has like 10,000 people in it and then just, you know, make it seem like you're busy. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's 10,000 other people who will get work done. And that's, that's, that's executive thinking right there. So you think like an executive. It's just to look like you're doing work. Yeah, that's that's something that I've experienced a lot is when people effectively get on a high horse and say, but I'm so much more important than you and look at all the things that I'm doing and so on and so forth. We're all here to make this work. And while your job is important, you know, my job's important too. Like, let's think, we all contribute to this, to making this thing happen. And having worked in a lot of creative environments, like, you know, it's... Everybody's contributing yeah. to it. Or they're not, right? And it's like, that sucks, but whatever. Because, um, you know, I, I say that there are situations where people are just lazy and expect to make more money, so... You mean making but money also, without worked in doing anything? Doing anything? With everybody else doing the work? What? Um... But also having worked in marketing, there's usually a conflict between sales and marketing because mm. people are trying to blame each other for why things aren't working. And the sales team, oh, the, the leads suck that the, the marketing team's bringing in, our marketing's not bringing in people, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, we can actually look at what's going on and work together as a team rather than making it adversarial. And, yeah. But it's that same kind of a thing. It's like, yeah, and salespeople, the way that like they're paid versus other people in a lot of companies, like either it's feast or famine. But a lot of the times it's like it's way. Is that a doom reference back there? Hell, it is. Can fiddle. With you you could. It would doom. be funny if you could just sit here and play this game, and then the enemies just come up and watch, like surround you and watch as you're playing it. So surround you, you and watch play. Now get turned around and go to the right. Well, that works too because there's health. Is that what you're just trying to get him yeah, his health? To get him to max out his health because <laughs> this level doesn't seem very friendly with not only his guns continuing to jam, but with how many guys there are. You should have less marmalade in your life, Nugget. Marmalade. I know it's your favorite thing ever. That's deep cut, audience. If you if you know that reference, you're amazing. You, you, if you don't you, know that reference, you're still amazing. You just haven't watched our channel for five or years. Or you haven't watched that or video yet about. on our channel. Because we do have, you know, several videos. Well, that is referenced in several videos as well. 
that specific that specific scene is referenced in channel videos, in old channel videos, in the video that was mm -hmm. in. We've discussed what marmalade is several times. So, I think you gotta go where those lasers are. Yeah, it said to the moon though. So just because he was gonna beat you like you were his wife. That's a reference to uh, the Honeymooners, where to the moon was a, 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 re a, a, a way of saying he's going to beat his wife. He's going to hit his wife. And everybody laughed at it. And that was the 1950s, folks. Mm-hmm. Times have changed. Times have kind changed. Of a, kind, of a, kind of a point. Times have changed and they're different. They're different. Because these days, if it was a sitcom, it would be the wife saying that to the husband. That she was going <laughs> to beat his ass. It's very Still abuse, different. but just changing the gender. We're all about equality here. Equal abuse. You flip to the other side of the coin, it's still that same coin. A boy and his toys. Doors locked. Mm. Can you Fine, jump? Can like, it doesn't seem like you can jump, so I'm just curious if you have a jumping mechanic. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you do. Won't hear me up here. Nah, there's no way. It's shipping containers. They're the perfect building material. Yep. There's a... Grand Design, that's the name of it. It's a British show. Architecture, like, home <laughs> design. Like people are remodeling in this big, crazy, ridiculous. Charlie's running he's, away. he's running away. Just hop over the top. But he's getting closer towards me. Oh, is he? No. Oh, now he's not. Anyway. It's because I think he's running downstairs. Um, but there was a guy, there's an architect, who was working on his dream home project. And it was Whoa. shipping containers. Oh, my gosh, you just saved your life. It's yeah. intentional. So he's making this house out of shipping containers, right? And he Whoa. stacks them and cantilevers them in different ways. He's like, but be Whoa. because I'm he's I'm not stacking them. Uh. That seemed yeah, really no, easy. Yeah, no, he's straight up teleporting. But I'm um, sorry, continue. So anyway, so the guy's making that out of the, his his home out of these shipping containers, but he's not stacking them to where the strength points are. So he's like, so I've got to build all these extra reinforcements on it. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, and then I'm doing two by six framing on the interior walls and then I'm going to clad them in a bunch of other metal on the outside to make it look cool. Yeah. So essentially he just built interior walls and exterior walls around a shipping container and a bunch of other framing to make it structural. But like, you could have made this without the shipping container. Like, this isn't... <laughs> when people were like, hey, we could use old shipping containers as, as homes, it was specifically because... Their idea was set the shipping container down and cut a door or a window in the side. And that's cheap and easy and, you know, not build a house around two shipping containers and think you're cool. <laughs> Am I cool yet, Dad? Do you love me now? Yeah. Well, this seems so similar kind of a, you know, hipster stupid like ridiculous thing the I can't think of their names they're out of West Texas the couple that flipped homes and with people and helped them out dude there have been so many yeah, of that's it's a pretty broad statement <laughs> yeah it's like it's there's, a couple there there's there's so many of chip chip, chip and was Joanna. The husband's name chip and Joanna okay gains right yeah, yeah. anyway I remember seeing their like their first show and like they were whatever and they they discovered shiplap in this house and like it's old shiplap under these walls and look how great it is. And I started making a joke with my wife as we were watching that, like shiplap, shiplap, shiplap. And then like we were watching one of those episodes or one of those shows that with that those people. Yeah. And they're like, I'm gonna bring the I'm gonna bring this the couple over to my kitchen because I want them to see the my the idea of what I want to do for them. It's really similar to what I have here. And it was everything in the house was shiplap and it was all just whitewashed and it was like 
Oh my god, this is no like holy crap. That's so it's funny that I'm making that joke and then we see her house and it's like it literally is everything is just shiplap. It's like the table's made out of old shiplap. <laughs> the walls are shiplap. The, bed the is countertops. Shiplap. Yeah. The the backsplash. We're like, uh and then it was all just like yeah. Whitewashed. Another one came back. He came to investigate the death of did he make his loop? And now he's going to loop again because he shot him in the face. Now, I don't want to be, you know, so judgy about people's choices. But sometimes when I look at a house and I just wonder, you made that choice? Like, that's a choice. Like, that's a choice. <laughs> sometimes it's like, I, I I applaud the uh, confidence you have in your taste. Yeah, but it's it's very strongly one person's taste to where I imagine trying to resell the house. That's that's always terrible. Like, yeah, I've, I've seen some. Ooh, whoa, uh, when whoa. It comes to looking at houses, you can got? teleport. What the? You, got, you can teleport like that guy was doing. So now it's just Half Life Alex again. You can just point and. Move. Well, I like how you're wanting to like hack that, but you don't really need to hack it, do you? You just need to escape. I hack, want, to, you want to hack, the, to hack the hack the planet. Hack the planet. Hack the planet. But yeah, there. I just see it so often with houses and whatnot, where it it just it, it's it's something to where if someone tries to resell their house, it's not. It's not going to be easy. Well, yeah, there's that. Yeah, there's there's a lot of that where people are just. Yeah, <laughs> they make a choice. Sometimes they it's like, well, there's not much of another. There, there's not much of a choice I could have made in this situation for what you're trying to do. And it's like, yeah, but also there's like the. Just special choices where you're like, all right, hey, it's yours. It, um, that's that's good. Yeah. Like, they won't hear these rustling rocks down this cliff. He's throwing rocks down. That doesn't seem weird. No, no, not the guy who's throwing rocks. Oh, dope oh, kerfuffle. And then there's two more kerfuffles. Oh no, a kerfuffle. Where you need to go. Hello. 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 Auto fill. Kerfuffle. Got to escape. Yeah, let's they blow this joint. There's got to be a way to kill two of them at once. Or three There's got or to four. be. <laughs> or more. No, they can't be that stupid. Well, maybe Alexis. Well, yeah. look at that. This is a perfect place to end this episode. Perfect. Perfect. I hope you, audience, you understand what's going on and or that you learned about kerfuffles. not being a dick. And you learned about kerfuffles and... Bombastic taints. Don't be a taint. Bombastic taints and thigh taints, apparently, and booty taints and all kinds of taints. Because we're a very mature channel. We are the wide world of taint. Yes. But I guess that's it. Yeah. We're that's leaving. that. I don't know if Nugget has any fun words. Gooch. Gooch. We've been ignoring that <laughs> word in this episode. We have been. It's it's been mostly taint related. Can't forget the gooch. Same thing, but anyway, yeah. bye.